about uh, somatic sensations. Somatic sensations. You know, there are two types of sensations, special sensations and somatic sensations. Special sensations, you have been taught from the visual sensation, olfactory, auditory, vestibular. So, today we will discuss about the somatic sensations. Somatic sensations. We will divide these into three types. Mechanoreceptive sensation, mechanoreceptive sensation, pain sensation, and thermal sensation. Mechanoreceptive, we divide further into tactile sensation and sensation of position. Tactile sensation of position. Tactile, we further divide into touch, pressure, itch, tickle, and vibration. So we divide tactile sensations into touch, pressure, itch, tickle, and vibration. And vibration. So first we discuss about uh, the mechanoreceptive sensation and in these we first discuss about the tactile sensation, it includes the touch, pressure, itch, tickle, and vibration. For tactile sensations, a number of receptors are involved, say, three nerve endings, Merkel discs, hair follicle receptors, meniscus corpuscles, the synium corpuscles, the roughness and organs. So these are involved in the tactile, tactile sensation. When these tactile sensations, impulses are carried by a beta nerve fibers, having velocity of 30 to 70 meter per second, a beta nerve fibers having velocity of 30 to 70 meter per second, a delta nerve fibers having velocity of 5 to 30 meter per second, so a delta nerve fibers having velocity of 5 to 30 meter per second, and C fibers which are unmarginated having a velocity up to 2 meter per second. Touch sensation. What is stimulus for touch? A slight pressure, a slight pressure which produces indentation of the receptor membrane or the cells adjacent to the receptor membrane. So touch stimulus is a pressure, is a pressure which produces indentation of the receptor membrane or of the cells adjacent to the receptor membrane. Pressure sensation is perceived when there is deformation of deeper tissues. So deformation of deeper tissues results into perception of pressure sensation. Sensitivity to touch varies. So touch sensitivity, it varies. And it depends upon the number of touch receptors present. So touch sensitivity, it varies and depends upon the number of touch receptors present. So most sensitive 
or to touch is tip of the tongue. You see, tip of the tongue. Then fingertip, index finger, fingertip, lip, palm, forehead, back of hand, neck. Back is least sensitive to touch. Back is least sensitive to touch. Now in the touch sensation, one important aspect is two-point tactile discrimination. Two-point tactile discrimination. And that is ability to discriminate two close pointed objects as separate. So ability to discriminate two close pointed objects as separate. You take a compass or a caliper, compass or a caliper having two pointed ends and these ends are very close together. Right? So we are able to perceive the two pointed ends of the caliper or the compass as separate. Say at the tip of the tongue, fingertip, the minimum separable distance at the tip of the tongue and the fingertip, the minimum separable distance is one to three millimeter. You appreciate one to three millimeter apart, two pointed objects can be discriminated as two separate points. On the back, on the back of the body, the minimum distance for two-point tactile discrimination is 20 to 50, 20 to 50 millimeter. You see, you appreciate it is 20 to 50 millimeter, the minimum separable distance on the back of the body, 20 to 50 millimeter. <coughs> How can you test touch sensation? Two method. One is wool method, cotton wool. We take. The second method is esthesiometer with the help of the esthesiometer. So you take a piece of cotton wool, ask the subject to close eyes, and you place the piece of cotton wool on different parts of the body. And you ask the subject to indicate where he is able to feel the cotton wool. So by cotton wool piece, you can now test the touch sensitivity. And the other method I mentioned is esthesiometer. 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 This esthesiometer, it consists of a metallic handle to which metallic hair can be attached. Metallic handle to which metallic hair can be attached. These metallic hair are of variable thickness. These are of variable thickness, say thin and thicker, thicker, thicker than, right? So by attaching the different hairs to the metallic handle and then you ask the subject to close the eyes and you keep the metallic hair on the part of the body and ask the subject whether he is able to feel the metallic hair or not. He is able to feel the metallic hair or no. This is the testing of the touch sensation with the help of the esthesiometer.
keep in mind that in touch sensation, localization is highly developed. So highly developed localization, localization in the touch sensation. One aspect of touch is stereognosis. Stereognosis. Stereognosis is ability to identify the object. Ability to identify the object by touching with hands, with closed eyes. So ability to identify the object by touching with hands, with closed eyes. So you ask the subject to close eyes. You some, put some point, some object in his hand and you ask him to identify the object by touching with hand with closed eyes. This is called stereognosis. Stereognosis. Right? And keep in mind, this stereognosis is highly developed in the blind system, in, in, in the blind people. In the blind people, it is highly developed. You know the braille system of communication in the blind people. So by touching the braille system, they are able to identify the letters or the other objects. So when there is a loss of stereognosis, it is called astereognosis. So loss of stereognosis is called astereognosis. So this was about the touch and pressure sensation. Touch and pressure sensation. The other tactile sensation is tickle and itch. Tickle and itch. Tickle. Good good. Gives pleasure. Tickle gives pleasure. Itch. Itch is annoying. It is annoying. Pain, of course, is unpleasant. Pain is unpleasant. Tickle and itch are perceived, are perceived when there is mild, local, mechanical stimulation. Mild, local, mechanical stimulation mild local mechanical stimulation. Say, an insect is crawling on the skin, insect is crawling on the skin, an insect is going to bite, an insect is going to bite, you feel, of course, you start with tickle, and then itch, itch. So when there is uh, itching, when there is itching, you scratch. So itching results into scratching. Itching results into scratching. Itching results into scratching. And scratching relieves itch. Scratching reveals itch. How? You feel itch. You scratch there, and by scratching, the irritant is removed. By scratching, the irritant is removed. So, itch is relieved. The other mechanism is, when scratching becomes severe, when there is severe scratching, when there is severe scratching, it results into pain. It results into pain. And pain impulses inhibit itch impulses in the spinal cord. When the sphere secreting, it results into pain. And pain impulses inhibit itch impulses in the spinal cord. In the spinal cord. So these are the two ways in which 
separating relieves the eating. The eating. Eating occurs on the skin or in the eyes or in certain mucous membrane. In certain mucous membrane, eating occurs. Eating occurs. The septors involved in the tickle and itch are free nerve endings. These are free nerve endings. And these are called the C mechano receptors. C mechano receptors. And the impulses of tickle and itch are carried by C type of fibers, C type of nerve fibers, which a sending tract carries the tickle and itch impulses, ventral spinothalamic tract. So ventral spinothalamic tract, it carries tickle and itch impulses. I told you for tickle and itch, which is stimulus, I told you local mild mechanical stimulation. Local mild mechanical stimulation. Now in addition, itching can also be due to chemicals. It can also be due to chemicals, say histamine, kinin. You saw, you get some allergy. There is itching, and this allergic manifestation is because of the uh, histamine or the kinin. Histamine or the kinin. So this was about tickle and itch. Tickle and itch. Next tactile sensation is vibration. Vibration. You take a tunic fork, you take a tunic fork, set it into vibration, set it into vibration, and place its base on the bony part of the body. On the bony part of the body. You feel a buzzing sensation or a thrill. You feel a buzzing sensation, a buzzing sensation or a thrill. This is the vibration sensation. Repetitive rhythmic pressure stimuli are perceived as vibration. Repetitive rhythmic stimuli, repetitive rhythmic stimuli are perceived as vibration. Repetitive rhythmic stimuli are perceived as vibration. Vibration can be low frequency vibration, say 80 hertz, 80 cycles per second. It can be more than 100, 300, 500 hertz or cycles per second. Now, which receptors are involved in the sensation of vibration? Which receptors are involved? Mesonal corpuscles are involved in low frequency vibration. Mesonal corpuscles are involved in low frequency vibration. Mesonal corpuscles. And for high frequency vibration, a synian corpus, a synian corpuses are involved in high frequency, in high frequency vibration. So for low frequency, measles corpus. For high frequency, a synian corpus. So involvement of a synian corpuses in high frequency vibration. Impulses of vibration are carried by are carried by the dorsal column medial lemniscal system. So impulses of vibration are carried by which sensory tract, which sending tract? Dorsal column, dorsal column, medial lemniscal system. Dorsal column, medial lemniscal system. 
So just talk about the sensation of vibration. Now we have discussed about touch, pressure, tickle and itch, and the sensation of vibration, which are tactile, tactile sensation. So we have discussed about the tactile sensation. The other mechanoreceptive sensation is sensation of position. Position, sensation. Position, sensation. So two types of the sensation of position, static and kinesthetic. Static. Static and kinesthetic. Static. Static position sensation is cautious perception of, cautious perception of orientation of different parts of the body with respect to each other. So, cautious perception of orientation of different parts of the body with respect to each other. Now I am standing. Of course my body is erect. My hands are flexed. My arms are flexed. So I got cautious perception that my arms and hands are flexed. Of course my legs are extended. So this is the static sensation position <clears throat> that, is the, that is the conscious perception of orientation of different parts of the body with respect to each other. The other set of position is kinesthetic. Kinesthetic. Kinesthetic is that cautious perception of the rate of movement of different parts of the body. Cautious perception of the rate of movements of different parts of the body. I am moving my arms at a slow rate. At a slow rate, I can move my arms at a rapid rate. This is the cautious perception of the rate of movement of different parts of the body. So this is the static position, and then we discussed about the kinesthetic position. Sense of position is also called proprioception. It is also called proprioception. Proprioception, that is the sense, the sense of position and movement proprioception, sense of position and movement. Which receptors are involved in proprioception or in sense of position? Which receptors are involved? Receptors are called the proprioceptors. Proprioceptors. What are the proprioceptors which are involved? These include muscle spindle, muscle spindle, Golgi tendon organ, Golgi tendon organ, Ruffinese end organ, Ruffinese end organs, and then Pacinian corpuscles, Pacinian corpuscles. So muscle spindles, Golgi tendon organ, Ruffinese end organs, and then Pacinian corpuscles. So these receptors are included in the proprioceptor, in the proprioceptor. So if you analyze functions of these receptors, which are included as proprioceptors, muscle spindles, you know muscle spindles regulate the length of the muscle, regulate the length of the muscle, and prevent the length to go beyond limits, prevent the length to go beyond limits. So muscle spindles regulate length of the muscle and prevent the length to go beyond the limit. Golgi tendon organs. 
to all the tendon organs, regulate the muscle tension, regulate the muscle tension, and these must these prevent these prevent muscle damage when there is high muscle tension. These prevent muscle damage when there is high muscle tension. So they have got a protective role to prevent tearing of the muscle, detachment muscle tendons when there is high muscle tension. And then there is strong stretch. Strong, very strong stretch. The roughen is end You know, these respond to deep pressure. Deep pressure. Stretching of the skin, deep pressure, and stretching of the skin. So I move, say, my knee. I flex my knee. Skin is stretched. So the roughness and organs are stimulated. Similarly, I angulate my knee. There is stimulation of the roughness and organs. Then the simian corpuscles, the simian corpuscles, these also respond to movement, they respond to movement and also to the vibration, high frequency, high frequency vibration. Now you must have analyzed that uh, the proprioceptors are present in the skin and other tissues around joints. Proprioceptors are present in the skin and deeper tissues around joints. Around joints. Impulses of proprioception, impulses of proprioception are carried by 